U.S. fighter jets being scrambled and shooting down three mysterious flying objects in just the last three days alone. The White House and Pentagon are now facing growing pressure to answer just basic but burning questions. What are these objects? Who sent them? They were all different shapes and sizes, according to officials. They were flying at different altitudes. We're told that the latest object was shaped like an octagon and shot down over Michigan near Lake Huron. It was only flying 20,000 feet up, much lower than the objects that were shot down over Alaska and Canada on Friday and Saturday, respectively. It was at a lower than cruising the cruising altitude of a commercial airliner. The suspected Chinese spy balloon that flew across the U.S. was 60,000 feet in the air for comparison. It's a lot higher than the other objects we've been seeing in recent days. But lawmakers from both sides of the aisle are demanding more details from the White House, including the Republican chair of the House Intelligence Committee, Mike Turner. We prefer them to be trigger happy than to be permissive. But we're going to have to see whether or not this is just the administration trying to, to change headlines. But what we're seeing here is a number of announcements by the administration without any real information being given to Congress. This could be because they don't have any information. Our national security correspondent, Kylie Atwood, is at the State Department. And Kylie, I think that's a good question. What do they know? Do they know something that they're holding back? Or is it they're not saying a lot publicly because they don't really know a lot? Caitlin, it's pretty clear that they just don't know a lot right now. We spoke with uh, some Pentagon officials on the phone last night, and they put it pretty blatantly when they said, one of them, that they believe that this is the first time that U.S. Northern Command has used kinetic action, the military, to take down an airborne object in U.S. airspace. So this is pretty unprecedented. They are still trying to figure out a lot of the questions that lawmakers have answers to. Now, over the weekend, President Biden spoke with uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau of Canada, and they spoke after that object was downed over Canada. They both authorized the downing of that object. What they focused on was the need for recovery to a better understand the origin and the purpose of that object. But as you noted just out of the front there, there were three objects that were downed over the course of three days. On Friday, there was an object downed over U.S. coastal waters around Alaska, then the one over Canada on Saturday. On Sunday, another object downed by U.S. fighter jets over Lake Huron. Now, there is no clear connection to any of these, and that Chinese spy balloon that was down off the coast of South Carolina just last weekend. But the recovery efforts here are what U.S. officials are really looking at to try and learn more about where these objects came from, what they were doing in U.S. airspace. And we heard last night from the commander of Northern Command, however, that recovery efforts for that object that was down over the coastal waters around Alaska hasn't even begun because the teams are still working to locate that object. Yeah, we'll see what happens when they do finally locate it. Kylie Atwood, thank you. There's lots to discuss now. Joining us now, Senate Political and National Security Analyst David Sanger and retired U.S. Army Major Mike Lyons. Good to see both of you. Thank you very much. So I'm interested in what you have to say about this, Mike Lyons, because you are saying that this is a wake-up call. What, why do you say this is a wake-up call? No, I think it is. It puts uh, the United States on notice for this great power competition between us and China, this one at 60,000 feet, potentially. Uh, this is high-altitude airspace that, uh, in the past, that the Chinese have encroached on before, um, in other nations as well, and we've just kind of ignored it. And uh, now we're going to have to put the resources towards looking over the horizon, especially in areas in the north, in Alaska, so to speak, if we're going to protect our country in a post-9-11 world. I'm just still shocked that we don't have control of this airspace it, from 60,000 to 40,000, especially in that FAA space, uh, with regard to what we know is going in there. David, you have covered the national secur security space. Has the, when was the last time the U.S. scrambled fighter jets to shoot something down in U.S. airspace? Gee, I can't remember one, Caitlin. And in fact, when NORAD uh, took down that uh, balloon on uh, Saturday, or what has been uh, described uh, now as a, as a balloon, I think it was the first time that NORAD had actually fired uh, in a real live situation, not training, uh, in North American airspace, which which gets to you know the point of how unusual this is. But, you know, there's a big distinction between the first balloon, the one that clearly came from China, and the three that we've seen now. For the first one, the U.S. actually tracked it as it was leaving Hainan Island in China and saw it go up over the Aleutians and then, of course, warned the president. And they made the decision, right or wrong, to track it across the United States. 
These other three, there's no indication right now that they came from China. Their small size suggests that they may have been much more local. We don't know if they were a foreign power's uh, balloons at all. And so that tells you that we've sort of got two separate issues going on here. The first is uh, how well we actually track these as they come into U.S. airspace and uh, understand what the sensitivity of our sensors are. Clearly, that sensitivity has been turned up in recent times, the way you might turn up a, a magnetic reader in an airport. And then the second is, what are the conditions under which you shoot them down? And it's not clear right now that these posed these latest balloons posed a major threat other than to commercial air traffic. Well, it's interesting. We had a major general on from NORAD who, who said, look, these have been happening for a while now. That maybe have always happened, but they've just tweaked the system that is able to track them. My question is, though, obviously the fascination is because it's balloons, right? And it's flying in spaces with commercial aircraft. That is very dangerous. But China has said that the U.S. has illegally flown high altitude balloons into China's sovereign airspace without Beijing's consent for more than 10 times in 2022. We spy on China, they spy on us. So what gives? What's new here? Mike Lyons? Well, I, I think, first and foremost, uh, we likely do that. We likely put these balloons up there. We're always looking for an advantage when it comes to communications. You know, the, what the balloons provide the military is kind of the skipping off this. Instead of a satellite from the Earth's uh, atmosphere, you get uh, better communications if you can do this. So there's no question that it wouldn't, doesn't surprise me at all that we've been doing that. It's looking to get an advantage on our side. Um, whether they're spy balloons really remains to be seen because we have the kind of technology that could read literally somebody's name tag and a foxhole down uh, from space if we had to do that. So uh, again, the, it's important that we're in high altitude. It's important that we're in that space and we're going to use it to our advantage. But what does it say to you that they're, they called the first one a balloon, as David said there. They're not referring to these as balloons. They're referring to them as objects. So, so what are they doing? Are they emanating pulsing s signals? Are they, are they relaying uh, communication signals? What, what exactly is the point? We don't really know what they are yet. Um, I'm sure the first balloon, for example, part of the reason why they allowed to track it because they really wanted to get inside of it. It was likely inoculated. It didn't harm the United States. It didn't do anything. And they used, a, you know, made a science experiment out of it, basically, which is why they convinced the administration to track it for all that spice. It seems, it seems that it, it is, uh, David Singer, more transparency rather than more incidents, right? It's like the incidents you see of, you know, on cell phones. There are more cell phones now, so people are able to to, to track them more, to see it more. So the, should we be more concerned about these developments, or is this good that we're at least getting more transparency now? Well, Don, you're absolutely right. You know, it's one of the cardinal rules of intelligence is that if you focus your systems on looking for a certain kind of thing, you're going to find more right. of them because things that sort of you ignored along the way. And I think there's a good deal of that happening. So we have to fine tune the system now to both um, pick up what we really care about, not pick up what we don't care about. And I think probably have a little bit better sense of what we really need to go shoot down because these are these were this is a pretty dramatic weekend, Super Bowl aside, uh, of, uh, of these shoot downs. Um, should we be more concerned? I think that it, it, we're right to focus right now more on this because the Chinese government clearly has put together a very comprehensive surveillance system of which the balloons are just a small part. But I'm not sure we should necessarily panic about the smaller incidents. Hmm. Big question, still remaining about it, but no two better to people to speak about it with. David Sanger, Major Mike Lines, thank you both. Good to see both of you. Thank you very much.